Okay, so in this video we're going to be uh, calculating beam deflection of this beam using the superposition tables. And we're going to want to be calculating it at the center of the beam, so that's going to be that point C right here. And we want to, so it's important to note that we want to find the deflection in the middle of the beam, so that's going to be at L over 2, so the whole length of the beam divided by 2, which is 8 feet in this case. But it's not necessarily the maximum. We could do the maximum, but in this problem we're just going to calculate it in the middle. And we're going to have to do this during the superposition tables. So in the back of your book, there is a, should be like an appendix. It's basically a list of a bunch of different equations for different types of loading. So there might be an equation for distributed load over the whole beam, distributed load over the half of the beam, concentrated loads at the end, the middle, or at different points, moments, there's everything. So I advise you to like look at those and kind of explore those a little bit. But in this case, we have a distributed load here, right? That is just over half the length of the beam and it's a constant distributed load, so it's rectangular. And we also have this moment here that's applied at the end at point B. So the good thing is, is that we have equations in the back of the book that we can use for this. So we're gonna be using these equations, right? And I listed them here. So in this kind of gold color is the equation for a distributed load over half of the beam. And they, it was nice in the table, they had an equation for y at L over two, which is what we want. And it's gonna be negative five times W L to the fourth over 768 times EI. For the moment in the red here, they didn't have an equation for the explicitly for y at L over two, but they did have an equation for y as a function of x. So what we're going to do here is we know what x value we want to plug in. That's going to be 8 feet. So we're going to plug in 8 feet for x here and be able to calculate the um, deflection. And whenever something is a function of x, like in this case, we usually call this the like the elastic curve, the equation for the elastic curve. And that's what um, they call it in my textbook in the table. But your textbook might be something different. And the reason they call this superposition is because to find the total deflection, we just add up the contributions from each of these. So it's going to be the from the distributed load plus the contribution from the moment. That's going to be the moment right there. So what we're basically going to do is um, sum the, the contributions from each and find the total. So let's do that. So we have our equations. We're ready to start plugging in our numbers. So let's start with the distributed load. So we have our equation here, and we know W, we know L. And we're just going to, for now, we're just going to leave everything in terms of EI. So L is always going to be whatever the length of the whole beam is. So in this case... It's going to be negative 5. So our W, what's our W? Our W is going to be that 3 kips per foot. So we're going to put in 3 kips per foot times L to the 4th. So L, the total length of the beam, is going to be 16 feet to the 4th power. And that's all going to be divided by 768 times E times I. And we're going to be adding... The contribution for the moment. So in this case, we need to plug in x equals 8 into this. So it's going to be negative. The magnitude of this moment is going to be 60 kips per foot. So it's going to be negative. We're going to plug this negative sign in front of here. And this is a positive moment, right? Because this would be causing compression on the top. So we're just going to be at minus. So it's just in this case, it's going to be minus 60 kip feet, right? Times X. So X is going to be 8 in this case because we're looking for the middle of the beam. And that's going to be divided by 6E times I times L. L is going to be the whole length, so that's going to be 16 feet. And then that whole that thing is going to be multiplied by L squared. That's going to be 16 squared minus X squared. So that's going to be 8 squared. And that's going to be our equation. So when we plug this into our calculator and we do the math, I did this already. So when we do this, we're going to find that it's going to simplify to negative 1,280 
and this is going to be kip, right? So it's going to be kip times, well, we have a foot to the fourth, and then we have a foot on the bottom. So it's going to be kip times feet to the third, right? And then we're going to add, it's going to be negative 960. And it's also going to be kip feet to the third. And I forgot on the left to do it over EI. These are both going to be divided by E times I. So this is really divided by E times I. And that is going to be what our total is. So we simplify this further, right? We find out that our total displacement at point C is just going to be these two added together. So that's going to be negative 2,240 kip feet to the third over E times I. So that's going to be our answer to this equation. So this is going to be the general form for our deflection at this point C here. So in reality, this would really deflect something like that, and our maximum would probably be somewhere over here, but we're looking for point C, so we're looking for this point. So we just want to find that. And if we want, what would we need to do if we wanted to find the total here? So the actual number, right? So we're going to need to divide by E times I, which we have an E, right? We know E is 29 times 10 to the third KSI, and our I, so our moment inertia is 586 inches to the fourth. So we've kind of seen this problem before in other videos where we have kips times feet to the third on the top, and then we have units for length of inches on the bottom. So we need to convert the top part to inches. So just kind of plugging this all together here, we're going to have negative 2,240 kip times feet to the third. So we're to change this to feet to the, from feet to the third to inches to the third, we're going to multiply by 12 to the third. And there's um, 12 to the third inches to the third over feet to the third, right? And then we're going to be just plugging in these numbers on the bottom. So it's going to be times 29 times 10 to the third, and that's going to be kip per inch squared. And that's multiplied by 586 inches to the fourth, right? And so all these units will cancel out. These kips will cancel. This is really inches to the third divided. This is really inches to the second power. So we're just going to be left with a unit in an inch. And we're going to end up with a total equals going to be negative because it's going down 0 0.228 inches. So this is going to be our answer. So that's going to be at, this is going to be at point C. So that was using the superposition tables. Um, there's a whole bunch of different combinations we can use um, for different types of problems for the superposition tables. Um, this one wasn't too bad. We did have to use the elastic curve for the moment. Um, but generally, the superposition tables are easier to use if we have something where the loading is relatively simple. And they're also really helpful for when we're doing indeterminate problems, which we'll, um, I'll probably do a video later of that. So thanks for watching the video and hope to see you next time.